method. And see, from here, I'll, I'll be, that, that side will be <coughs> edited. All right. Okay, let me, let me find that spot I had you in. I think you had it sideways. The notebook? Sideways? No, I'm... Yeah, you were propping one leg up on the... Ugh. Lisa, why don't you yes. rotate your stool? Because it's still not okay. Mostly it's trying just to get something to where it's not doing this. Right. Okay, and just be careful of your forefinger, which is in... Yeah, it's not in the camera mode. I can't see it. <laughs> All right. Checky, checky one, checky two. Checky, checky one, checky two. All right, it seems like we're ready to rock and roll. All right, and... There we go. How's the light? Pretty cool. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Hello, Greenlight community. My name's Charles Anderson. I'm just a guy from Goodwill, Oklahoma, and I have a really great game idea. I want to make a modal video game. Uh, so, what is a modal game? Uh, well, it's not a new concept. Uh, I haven't heard it referred to as a modal type game before, so I'm just throwing that out there. And um, to give an example, you know, maybe you're playing along and and uh, you know you're trying to get from point A to point B and so you press a button and boom the game shifts over to like say a side scroller where you're running along Metroidvania style you know getting to the goal line that way uh, dodging obstacles dodging monsters or going and fighting monsters uh, press that button boom uh, now it's uh, you know top town shooter where you're running along this corridor heading towards your goal uh, shooting dodging left right it, now it's not so much jumping, but it is definitely the left-right dodging. Uh, maybe you jump into a um, you know, JRPG map, where you know it's got the little map, and your movement from point A to point B is now much quicker. But then there's those random battle encounters. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, maybe you jump into a first-person mode, where you know you get to see how pretty this landscape is down on the very bottom level, and you just have a suggestion of where you need to get to to get to where you're going. Now that's the concept of a nav mode, a navigational mode. Now, along the way, there are going to be monsters, there are going to be obstacles. But what if you bump into the, a monster, right? What if the battle mode is separate from the navigation mode? So when you touch that monster, or the monster touches you, or one of your bullets hits a monster, or you know, one of the monster's bullets hits you, boom, we're going to have a battle mode start. Uh, maybe it starts up a Street Fighter-ish mode, where you go mano a mano up against this AI-driven computer monster, and, you know, it's your skills that define your victory. Uh, maybe it's that Japanese RPG thing, where uh, time's not really that important, and your skills aren't really that important, you just gotta choose the right actions to get through the battle. Maybe it's a puzzle game, where you're racing them against the clock. Maybe, maybe one of your friends plugged in a controller, and they joined in on the fun, and now you both are stuck in a bullet hell mo for about three minutes, fending off bullets, monsters, and everything with all the skills you have available to you. That's battle mode. <laughs> As a joke, I might even throw in extreme rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably not. <laughs> but battle modes. So we've got our navigation modes, battle modes. The sky's the limit for a mobile game, especially if it's well designed. Now, uh, I only have so much time to get her done, from my point of view. Uh, so I'm going to only focus on four or five of each mode, and my biggest problem will be your character It's going to have an RPG system. He'll be leveling up, you know. Now, I've got to pass his data from each of these modes, and so that the rewards that he collects, you know, all the stuff that happens, gets put into his RPG sheet. So... What flavor is my game going to be like? Well, let's look at some pictures, shall we? Uh, let's see. Oh, there's some pictures of possible navigation modes. All right. All right. 
we got some possible pictures of battle modes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's the oh golden game ratio. Not even applicable. Ah, here we are at the storybook. Yes. You're going to turn on the game, and the first thing that you will see is this book. And this book, it has 1,500 pages in it. The story and games are going to happen in 1,000 of those pages. What are the rest of the pages? Well, let's uh, let's uh, take a look. Er, just drag my. Oh, there's the next picture. All right. Here is a prologue. You're going to create your character there. You're going to have your first modes introduced there. You're going to get a clue as to how to handle this big mess that I'm going to be creating for you to enjoy. Here's the appendix. It's going to have some tools. It's going to have some options. You've got to be able to get your resolution. Maybe your machine's more powerful than mine. Your machine's probably more powerful than mine. But yeah, you'll be able to tweak how it looks, how it sounds. Uh, a guide. Maybe you have a mode that you need a little bit of refreshing on as far as to how to play it. Well, that's what that's there for. But in between this prologue, in between this appendix, this is where the games and the stories happen. So, uh, let's see. Let's go on. So, the pages flip. You're going into the introduction now. It zooms in on a picture panel of the book, and the game starts. And the first thing you're going to see, a Professor Graham is using a device which makes your character uh, one by default. One chooses the name. Graham tells one then to head over to Doc's house, and, uh, oh, and by the way, boom, here's a dusty old cartridge I found. Make the best use of it you can. At that point, Japanese RPG nav mode and battle modes are now unlocked. You're going to have a quick nav mode tutorial for the JRPG mode. You're going to get head over to Doc's house, talk to Doc. Doc will hand you an item. Then you're going to start heading back to Professor Graham's house. Along the way, a battle is going to happen. And that's when you get the JRPG battle mode tutorial. After that battle, you're going to hit Graham's house safely, where Graham puts this item on a device that looks like a safe. And the safe's going to beep, it's going to open up, and both one and Graham are going to look inside. And that's where the prologue ends, and the story begins. You now, as the gamer, have two hours of real time initially to beat the game, much like a movie. If you don't beat the game, you won't know why the world arbitrarily blows up. Whatever makes it to the safe in between the first page of the story and the last page of the story will be there for the start of the next go-round. So, why does the world blow up? Can you find out? Can you do it? And that, Greenlight Community, Go run with it. Now, I've already started this project, and I'm going strong with it, and I've got my YouTube channel set up. I'm actually starting this from this concept right here, and I'm going to take it to the full-blown video game that I envision, and I'm going to document it all. So, uh, yeah, I'll have a YouTube channel, and a lot of this other stuff here will be explained. So, thank you for listening. Later.